Welcome back to Vinny's Aquatics. All right, my fishy family, we're going to talk about invasive species. These are species that are not native to the ecosystem and whose introduction to that ecosystem causes or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Okay, this one here, this is the Nile perch. The Nile perch was introduced to Lake Victoria in Africa in 1954 where it ended up destroying 200 native species of fish through predation and competition for food. Now, we also introduced them here in Texas in 1975, but so far the species is still controlled. I mean, look at the size of that thing. Okay, so here's one here. It, this one's gross. This is the uh, Asian swamp eel. Uh, they're sometimes mistaken for Native American eel, or even the other invasive uh, European eel. But the Asian swamp eel, it's not even a true eel. It actually belongs to the fish family. Now, they're very predacious. They make it a threat to any new environment. These were probably introduced as a result of the aquarium trade, uh, releasing it from fish markets, uh, it's stocking at a food source, or it escaped from a fish farm during a flood. The next invasive fish, yeah, I can't keep saying species over and over again, is the northern pike. These are non-native, highly invasive predator that's been established in the Box Canyon Reservoir in northern Washington. They're considered a serious threat to both native and preferred non-native species. They have a voracious appetite for other fish and their prolific spawning habits represent a potential for great ecological and economic damage. This is a result of illegal introductions into Montana and now they migrated into Washington. Look at the teeth on this thing. Look at it. Look at it. This, this, this reminds me of the YouTube algorithm and what it did to my sub count this week. It's just vicious. But, but that's a story for another day. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell. Thank you. And do me a favor. Just double check. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been unsubscribing people all this week. Okay, let me ask you. Is it invasive if we actually introduced it? All right. These are the Asian carp. It's the big head carp, the black carp, the grass carp, and the silver carp. They're all known as the Asian carp. And they're causing a lot of problems in the Mississippi River. Now, when I say we introduced it, these four species of fish were introduced to the United States in the 70s to control algae, weed, and parasite growth in aquatic farms, the weeds and canal systems, and as a form of sewage treatment. But the problem is they eventually escaped and they're out competing the other fish for food and space. They're also thought to lower the water quality, which can kill off sensitive organisms like native freshwater mussels. Asian carp have been known to dominate entire streams, effectively pushing out the native species. Look at them. Look at, look at these things. Imagine getting hit in the head with one of these. <laughs> There's got to be a video of that. I got to look for it. So it's a good thing we introduced them to the ecosphere. Now here's the next one. The lionfish. This is one of the saltwater fish on this list. The lionfish, they're native to the Indo-Pacific, but they're now established all along the southeast coast of the United States, the Caribbean, and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, how did that fish get to the Atlantic? Well, nobody knows for sure, but it's likely that, that we did it, that we've been dumping unwanted lionfish from our home aquariums into the Atlantic Ocean for up to 25 years. If people, just stop it. Stop dumping your fish into the oceans, all right? Because since lionfish, they're not native to Atlantic waters, they have very few predators. They're carnivores, they feed on small crustaceans, they feed on fish. Scientists have concluded that the invasive lionfish population, it's just going to continue to grow. It can't be eliminated using conventional methods. And it's nearly impossible to eradicate once it's established. So, <laughs> good job. Good job dumping them out of your aquariums, people. And here's a clown knife. Another popular aquarium fish, but it can grow to over three feet long. It's also a popular food fish in its native range, but uh, I'm not gonna eat one of these. I, I don't know about you. These are native to Indochina, but it's been found in South Florida starting in the 90s. 
established in Palm Bay and Broward counties. But many clown knife fish, they died during usually cold winters. They had in 2010 and 2011, but the species now appears to be expanding its range. Now the last clown knife I had, he got attacked by my arowana and he got wiped out, which you can also see arowanas in the canals in Florida now. And I, I gotta ask it, what would possess somebody to go say, hey, I'm gonna go throw this in, in a canal. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go dump this in a pond. Like, that thought would never occur to me. <laughs> Why would you think to do that? We have the evolutionary afterthought, the walking catfish. Now this is a non-native species that was introduced again by people in the 60s to Florida. Uh, probably escaped from aquaculture facilities. Now the walking catfish, it thrives in our climate and prefers the stagnant or slow moving waters of ponds or canals that can be found all over Florida. Look at them, look at how many of them are in there. They're in, look, they're in there with crocodiles. The crocodiles are alligators, I'm not sure which one they are. Look at them, and they can walk. These things can walk across land. These fish, they can move from one body of water to another in search of food or a better living place. They just, look at them, they just, they just wiggle across the land. Look at them. I don't know. <laughs> Why do we do these things to ourselves? Well, look at, look at, look at how big it gets. Imagine you thought of this. It's in there, hey, we got a catfish. What can we do with it? I got an idea. Let's make it walk. And now we have the Northern Snakehead. I used to have one of these way back in the day but I didn't go and throw it in a lake or, or a pond. It just jumped out and died on the floor. But these are illegal now. They're beautiful fish, but, but they're a major concern in the ecosphere because they're a top predator. They disrupt all the natural aquatic feeding, the feeding infrastructure. Now, snakeheads, uh, they live in freshwater streams, rivers, uh, wetlands, ponds. They prefer low moving, stagnant waters. They can survive the cold winters, low oxygen environment. They're capable of breathing atmospheric oxygen. They may be able to jump out of the water and cross along a land, which is weird. Look at the size of this thing. It is, a, imagine getting your hands stuck in that thing's mouth. It is huge. Now here, look at them. This is, this is New York's Central Park right here. Look at the size of those. This is New York Central Park, people. These snakeheads are everywhere. Okay, it's believed that the northern snakehead fish entered the United States when aquarium owners, yes, aquarium owners discarded their unwanted exotic pets in the local waterways. Look, people, I know we don't do this anymore, but if anyone you know does this, or just just stop it. Just look at this. Look what we have in Central Park now, because somebody had to dump their snakehead into the friggin' river. Come on, just stop it, all right? Just stop it. And those, those are just some of the over 600 invasive species we have in the North American continent alone. Let's do our best, people. Let's try to protect our ecosphere. Let's, I don't know, some of these things, kill them on sight. That's, that's what you're told to do. So we need to do a better job protecting our ecospheres. We can't have these things just running rampant like they're little, little monsters just destroying everything. All right, my fishy family. It's one week for my first live stream, my 50th birthday party. I decided 6.30, 6.30 in the afternoon. That's when I'm gonna do it. And I try to find a time when no one else was doing it, but that's basically impossible nowadays. I saw I just picked 6.30, figure it's after, whatever, 6.30. I hope to see you all there. So let's wrap this up with a nice little bow on top. Let's not destroy our ecosphere. Let's be careful what we dump in our waterways. That means a lot of things. Thank you for joining me. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. And I'll see you next time on Vinny's Aquatics.